Okay, so for this video, we're going to uh, deal with this question, and that is, we want to find the angle. And what angle are we talking about? Well, I'm talking about this little angle right here, okay? So I have this angle, and I have some lines that are crossing through this circle. And uh, right here, these lines are forming some arcs, okay, in this circle. And, of course, we have some information here. But these particular lines uh, that are chopping through this circle, they're called secants. So when you're studying uh, circles, especially at the high school level, there's uh, various lines that you know intercept a circle, like a secant, or maybe touch a circle. Um, that's a tangent, or you know, are line segments in a circle that are chords. There's a lot of definitions and terms. So circles is a pretty uh, big topic. Uh, in geometry uh, as it should be because circles are very important in mathematics and uh, if you are uh, studying uh, high school level geometry or beyond okay you definitely need to know how to uh, answer a question like this now there is a particular formula that you uh, need uh, to answer this question so if you're not quite sure just stick around for a couple minutes I'll show you exactly what to do in a problem like this when you uh, have two uh, secants and a circle very common um, uh, problem. You definitely need to know how to uh, handle a problem like this for several reasons, which I'll touch upon here in just a second. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabla Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over uh, several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following uh, the link in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have um, 100 plus different uh, math courses, starting from pre-algebra, uh, algebra one, geometry. Okay, of course, we're studying geometry here. Uh, algebra two, I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here shortly. But I also do a lot in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, SAT, ACT, um, now let me just stop myself here. One of the things on like an SAT or ACT test, maybe even the GED, you can very well see a problem like this. Circle problems kind of show up. So that's kind of another point. You need to know this stuff, okay? Because even if you're, let's say you're taking a geometry course or another type of course, you're like, yeah, I just need it just to pass my class. No, if you are taking any one of these exams, let's say you're going to college, you very well may have to take the SAT or ACT. Um, but anyways, uh, continuing on, I also have other exams like the CLEP exam, AccuPlace or Alex, um, or a teacher certification exam like uh, the Praxis exams uh, or nursing entrance school exams. So all those exams I mentioned have uh, a lot of math on them, some uh, basic math, some more advanced math. If you don't do well on the math sections, you don't do well on the test. So I can definitely help you out. Just go to my website, check out my full uh, course catalog. If I don't have your exam, drop me a line and I will help you out the best I can. Um, I also do a lot with independent learners like homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning uh, program. Then I'll obviously help those of you that are struggling in your current math course. Now, if you're serious about improving and doing great, uh, being uh, great at math, uh, then you need to do the following. Okay, you got to take great math notes. So over decades of teaching math. It's apparent to me that those students who take great math notes almost always do very, very well. And the reverse is true. Those students who like to be on their cell phone, talk to their friends, and do homework for other class uh, classes, you know, your teacher sees all this stuff, right? You know, but listen, it's not, uh, you know, your grandparents, uh, probably your great, great grand grandparents were also distracted in school. At least I know I was way back in the 1980s. We had no internet. Uh, back in those days, but we still found a way to not do what we're supposed to be doing, okay, which is in class, you got to be paying attention, taking great notes, okay, there's just too much information, so for example, what we need here you know, requires a formula, if you're not paying attention, how could you do this problem if you weren't, uh, you know, you didn't write the formula down, so anyways, uh, work on your note-taking, everything else is going to get better for you, but in the meantime, I offer detailed, comprehensive math notes to help you out to include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so um, I'm going to uh, give you a chance to uh, solve this problem if you think you know how to solve it. I'm not going to give you the, uh, the formula just yet, okay? I'm going to give you the formula here in one second because once you see the formula, this is easy, okay? So let's get to... The solution again if you don't want to see it pause the video but here we go all right so 
here is the formula that we need to uh, use. And this formula is uh, relevant to uh, a lot of different situations when we're talking about circles. Okay, it, Here we're dealing with a secant. This is a secant and this is a secant line. Okay, Again, there's different type of lines with circles. So uh, meaning that you will have various different formulas. So you don't want to confuse those formulas. Okay, Sometimes we add uh, arcs, sometimes we subtract them. Uh, sometimes we do other stuff. So there's a lot of different things. We can have an uh, exterior angle. We can have an inscribed angle. We can have a central angle. So you got to, you know, have your information organized. And how could you possibly have all these, um, you know, formulas organized if you're not taking notes? You know, it kind of makes my point, right? So it's common sense. All right. So how does this formula work? Well, again, we want to know the measure. We want to know the measure of angle one. Okay. So with this formula works this way. So the measure of angle one is going to be one half the difference of the arcs uh, formed by these uh, secants. Okay, so we have one arc here. Okay, we're going to subtract this arc from this arc. So it's like, that's it. You know, this is pretty simple. Yes, indeed, it's not that difficult. So let's go ahead and just uh, plug in the information. So one half, 90 minus 20, which of course is 70. So one half times 70, right? We're subtracting these arcs. That's what the formula tells us to do is 35. So the measure of angle one is 35 degrees. So you're like, wow, that was easy. Okay. You're like, hmm, why was that so easy? Okay. I thought this was going to be more complicated problem. I thought I was going to be doing all kinds of crazy, you know, stuff. No, uh, a lot of math. Uh, if you know the formula, you know how to solve one version of the problem. It's not that difficult. Now, I could make this problem more interesting. I could give you this degree, and I could say solve for this arc, which is means you're going to have to plug some stuff in and do some algebra. Okay, that's a different story. So I could kind of um, put an extra flair, you know, spice up this problem. Uh, but the main, the main idea here is that you got to know um, formulas. Now, in geometry, there are a ton of formulas. So here, let's just talk about geometry real fast, and we'll wrap up this video. So you know, you're probably like overwhelmed. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm learning so many theorems on postulates and definitions and corollaries. If you don't know what a corollary is, don't worry about it. Uh, lemmas, there's these things you can even call lemmas. Most people are familiar with theorems and postulates and definitions. In geometry, you, you learn like hundreds of these, right? There's a theorem on this, a theorem on that, a postulate on this. Um, then you have formulas. You have formulas everywhere. So Think about it. How could you possibly, oops, how could you possibly, uh, you know, reference this information without taking notes? Okay. You got to take notes. Now, even some of you might be like, well, I don't really need to take notes because I can just go to my digital online uh, textbook and everything's in there and I can reference it. They already did the work for me. Well, there's a more important reason for you to take notes. Okay. One, you need the information, but two, here is uh, a student and this is the information going into their brain, okay, in the Marine Corps. Uh, yeah, that's what I did right after high school, and that shaped me up in terms of discipline. But this, we used to call that our brain housing group. <laughs> this is our brain, right? This is our computer here. So how do we get information to kind of go into our long-term memory, okay? Well, by writing things down, okay? When you write stuff down, that helps really solidify that information, okay? While you're just looking at it, that's like you're going to have, have very, it's only short-term memory, okay? Uh, but you need to have this stuff in your long-term memory because we are taking some exam like the SAT or ACT or maybe your final exam, okay, which your teacher is not going to give you all the formulas. You got to recall this information. If you're not taking notes, doing taking, using the physical process of writing stuff down, engaging all your senses, you know, your auditory, your visual, your kinesthetic. Uh, that's a pretty cool word, but that means when you're writing stuff down on a piece of paper, you know, going old school, that old school, you know, is there's, you know, just because it's old doesn't mean it doesn't work. It does work. Okay. And I'm telling you right here, um, this is how you're going to be successful in math. So why don't you just kind of uh, follow my lead on this and, uh, you know, more than just learning about this particular problem, learn how to be as successful as possible in mathematics. Okay. 
All right, so if this video helped you out, if you enjoy it in some way, if you're like, yeah, okay, this wasn't a waste of my time, please consider smashing that like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider uh, subscribing. I've been on YouTube for a long time. I uh, have well over a thousand videos by now, I'm sure. Uh, um, videos ranging from basic to advanced math, they're all there for you. My passion is to teach in a clear and understandable way. Okay, I'm always striving uh, to do that, but my best math help uh, will be within my uh, math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.